the Upanishad series Harmony Beyond Greed Every moment life keeps on changing one, one moment dissolves into the next and the process continues Live this moment totally, full of awareness, because in this moment, if you live totally, you will attain to something which you can carry to the other shore. Live as if that this is the only moment available to you. Next moment will not come. Live it totally with awareness so that the process of one moment dissolving into the another continues along. This is life and life is energy. Life is an infinite reservoir of energy. We stand on the shore of time, where waves go on striking. There is no end and no beginning. Everything is just in the middle, and we are an insignificant wave. You are an infinitesimal seed of infinite possibilities. Quite naturally, wave wants to be the ocean and seed wants to be the tree. Unless the seed blossoms into a flower, fulfillment is impossible. It has an insatiable quest to be bliss. Before this, many temporary points or possibilities come. In the night you may stay one place for rest. Never make anything as the permanent place. Only bliss can be your, only the ultimate flowering can be the final destination. Energy that you are has three forms. First form is solid. In this nothing is manifest. Then comes the tree form in which everything becomes visible. The first form is solid or seed form. In seed nothing is visible. The second form is the tree in which everything becomes manifest. Yet still the soul, the prana, remains unmanifest. And the last form is the one in which the life force of prana is manifest. Seed implies desire, desire to grow, desire to attain fruition and journey of fruition begins at the level of the body where you are this very moment and if you have learned to live this moment totally this very moment will unfold into the next one and this chain of the moments will become time it will become a source for harmony it will become a source for bliss and both harmony and bliss lie beyond the realm of greed. Greed means you do not want to leave this moment, you want it to continue but this moment has to dissolve to give place to the next moment. Unless this present moment dies, 
the next will not come there is a beautiful song every moment is changing live it totally who knows tomorrow the next moment may come or not if you have lived this moment totally who bothers for the next moment next moment you bother only because of greed because you have not lived this moment totally with awareness and understanding a repressed person goes on carrying the same world as you are for him nothing changes just an opportunity is needed and immediately the real will emerge that is why the monks disappear from the world because there are too many provocations too many temptations for them it is difficult for them to remain contained to hold on so they go to the mountains or to the caves they retire from the world so that even if the idea temptation desire arises there is no way to fulfill them but this is not the way of transformation existence is total celebration every moment flowers go on blossoming the chirping of the birds the blossoming of the flower the wind blowing surging through the tree leaves all this is symbolic of constant celebration that is taking place people who become cold to this celebration they avoid are the people who were once full of energy people who took the vow of remaining celibate are the people who were extremely sexual the mind turns from one extreme to another it's very easy it is the observation that people who are too obsessed with food one day or the other become obsessed with fasting it is quite natural it has to happen because you cannot stay in one extreme for a long period of time you are doing too much of one thing soon you will get fed up of it then there is no other way you have to move to the other extreme and the way is to remain in the middle the moment you are not moving to the extremes instead you are in the middle you will attain to harmony oneness and bliss is the outcome people who have become monks are very worldly people the market was too much for them they could not sustain in the market they had moved too much in the market then the pendulum moved to the other extreme greedy people renounce the world this renunciation is not of understanding it is just greed upside down first they were holding now suddenly they see the futility of it and they start throwing it away first they were afraid of afraid to lose a single cent now they are afraid to keep a single cent but the fear continues first they were too greedy about the world now they are too greedy about the other extreme the other world but the greed continues 
whether for this world or that world, whether for this extreme or that extreme. These are the people, these people one day or the other are bound to join a monastery. Then they become great celibates or renouncers. But it does not change their nature. Except awareness, nothing brings about change. Whatsoever you are doing, you are totally aware of it. That something is happening. You are seeing what is going on within. That alone brings the change. That which has not happened, has not happened. Understand it. And do not try to pretend and make others believe that it has happened. Because nobody is going to lose in this deception except you. People who try to control themselves have chosen a very foolish way. Control will not happen. But they will become in the process very cold who try to control themselves, which everybody tries to do, have chosen a wrong path. Control cannot happen. It will make you cold and that is the only way man can control himself to become frozen so that the energy does not arise. People who take the vow of celibacy will not eat much. In fact, they will starve their bodies. If more energy is created in the body, then there is every possibility that this energy can create havoc in you. Because at the gross level, this existential bioenergy exhibits itself as the sex energy and you have to, through your awareness, transform into the next layer, the love, and then it will become compassion. As a result, Buddhist monk eat only once a day and that too not enough. They eat only enough that bodily needs are fulfilled, very minimum needs, so no energy is left. This type of celibacy is not celibacy. When you are flowing with energy, and an energy starts transforming itself into love, then the true celibacy begins. This is beautiful and it happens. Through control, you will not even be able to hit one. That is not the way. You are fighting with leaves, branches and cutting them here and there. That is not the way to destroy the tree of desire. The way is to cut the roots and the way to cut the roots is the only way and for this you have to reach the roots of the desire. On the surface there are only branches like jealousy, anger, envy, hatred and lust. They are just on the surface. The deeper you move, the more you will understand. They are coming out of one root and that root is unawareness. <laughs> unawareness is the root out of which jealousy, anger, envy, hatred and lust emerges as different branches. Meditation brings awareness. 
it cuts the very root. Then the whole tree disappears on its own accord and passion becomes compassion. I have heard about a Zen master who had become old and almost blind at the age of 96 and he was no longer able to teach or work about the monastery. Young Moto was his name. The old man then decided that this was the time to die because he was no use to anyone. He could not help anyone, so he stopped eating. When asked by his monks why he refused to eat, he replied that he had cultivated his usefulness and was only a bother to everybody now. They told him, if you die now, it was January, when it is so cold, everybody will be uncomfortable at your funeral and you will be an even greater nuisance. So please eat. This can happen only in a Zen monastery because disciples love the Master so dearly that out of their deep respect they do not need any formality. Just see what they are saying. They are saying if you die now and it is the month of January extreme cold so it is so cold and because you will die, everybody will be uncomfortable at your funeral and you will be a greater nuisance. So eat. He thereupon re resumed eating, but when it becomes warm again, he stopped and not long after he quietly died such compassion, one lives then for compassion, one dies then for compassion. He, at the request of his disciples, because it was a winter time, dying during the winter, as the disciples said will be a great nuisance for him, he will create because everyone will have to go to his funeral and it is extremely cold. Out of compassion he started eating and when the summer months approached, died quietly. Such compassion, one lives then for compassion, one dies then for compassion, one is even ready to choose the right time so that nobody is bothered and one need not be a nuisance. I have heard about another Zen master who was going to die. He inquired, where are my shoes? Bring them. Someone asked, what are you going to do? The doctor say that you are going to die. He said, yes, I know I am going to die, but I must go to the cemetery. He said, I am going to the cemetery. The disciple inquired, but why? He said, I do not want to trouble anybody. Otherwise, you will have to carry me on your shoulders. I am going on my own. He walked to the cemetery and died there. Tremendous compassion. What manner of man is this? not to give even that much trouble to anyone. And these people helped thousands. Thousands were grateful to them. Thousands became full of light and love because of them. 
yet they would not like to bother anyone if they are useful they would like to live and help if they are not useful then it is time to leave and go you have lived your life this is awareness this is compassion and when you <coughs> live like this you are living every moment overflowing with energy one moment unfolds into the other and the process continues you do not have to celebrate life at any particular moment every moment becomes a celebration this celebration unfolds into the other we go on celebrating in our own way when the old year is coming to an end and the new is knocking at the door you think it is one event it is composed of small moments and if you have learned to live this one particular small moment it will unfold into the other live it totally aware meditative prayerfully not with loud noise as has become the way of the present moment you are living it meditatively celebrate the moment and wish you all a happy new year